Hi, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner, and welcome to this Saw franchise movie review video as part of my current series where I'm taking a look at the entire Saw franchise, all nine existing movies, watching and reviewing before ranking them all at the end of this month, all in preparation for Saw X, which is coming out on September 29th, I believe, about a month from now, a little more than a month from now. So the first seven movies I've watched and reviewed, those reviews are up on my channel if you want to check them out. Today we're going to take a look at the eighth movie in the franchise and the last movie that's part of this eight movie collection, Blu-ray and DVD here, Saw Film Collection, and that is Jigsaw from 2017, which like most of the movies in this franchise is a first time watch for me as part of this series. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So... Jigsaw is a 2017 American horror film directed by the Spearing, Sp Spirig or, Sp or Spirig brothers and written by Josh Stolberg and Peter Goldfinger. It is the eighth installment in the Saw film series. The plot follows a group of people who find themselves forced to participate in a series of deadly games inside a barn. Meanwhile, the police investigate a new series of murders that fit the modus operandi of the eponymous Jigsaw killer who has been dead for almost a decade. So basically, the film opens with detectives Brad Hall Halloran and Keith Hunt who pursue Edgar Munson, who claims that he must start a game in exchange for his own survival. He activates a remote trigger and is then shot and collapses. Five people, Mitch, Anna, Ryan, Carly, and an unconscious man, awaken inside a barn with buckets on their heads and chains around their necks. A tape recording from John Kramer explains that they must each sacrifice blood to survive, before the chains pull them towards a wall of buzz saws. Most of the group survives by cutting themselves, except for the unconscious man who awakens too late. The next test reveals that Carly, a purse snatcher, accidentally caused the death of an asthmatic woman. To save the others from being hanged, she must inject herself with one of three needles. One is an antidote to a poison in her system, another being saline, and another one being acid. She refuses, so Ryan injects her with all three, killing her, and saving the others. So that's the setup and the premise, the beginning of the movie for Jigsaw from 2017. As far as the cast goes, we have Matt Passmore, it's Logan Nelson, Tobin Bell is Jigsaw slash John Kramer, Callum Keith Rennie is Detective Halloran, Clay Bennett is Detective Keith Hunt, Hannah Emily Anderson is Eleanor Bonneville, Laura Vandervoort, Vandervoort as Anna, and Paul Bronstein as Ryan. So yeah, that's the setup, the premise, and the cast for Jigsaw from 2017. Um, I'm just going to get this out of the way. This is the best movie in the Saw franchise, at least of the first eight that I watched. Just had everything I wanted in it. So absolutely better than the first three Saw movies and even Saw 6. And if you don't think it is, then I don't know what you're smoking. I had you going there, didn't I? No, it's not... Um, it's not the best movie in the franchise. In fact, I would say this is the worst movie in the franchise, at least of the first eight that I've seen so far. That was just, I just wanted to have a little bit of fun there. But um, Yeah, eh, let's just get into it, starting with the things that I liked about the movie. These are going to be more technical aspects of the movie. So my pros are, this might be the best shot and the best looking of all the Saw movies. They definitely took more of the budget the money from the budget and put more of it into the camera work, the overall cinematography. Um, and that really comes across in this movie compared to some of the other ones, especially the sequels where you can tell it was all about the traps and the gore and everything and less about how it was shot. I think they shot it pretty cheaply. Um, just like one step up from videotape kind of thing. This movie, they definitely, it definitely feels more cinematic than some of those other saw sequels did. Um, Let's see. It, this movie has pretty good pacing in terms of it. It doesn't have a lot of that shaky editing when when the traps go off and we see people die like the previous movies do. I think it's one of the easier Saw movies to get through in terms of a pacing standpoint than some of the other ones because of that lack of shaky editing and just the just the overall pacing of it. It's about 92 minutes, and I felt like that was it was pretty sufficient. So um, that's another pro that I have. Um, it's not as tied to the previous seven movies to where a viewer has to have seen the other seven movies in order to watch this one and have it make any sense. It's, it takes from the other movies, certainly, but it's kind of its own thing, kind of a reboot for the series a little bit. In fact, I'm not sure 
Somebody can comment down below if this is actually considered to be a sequel or like a reboot movie. I mean, it's, well, I don't want to get into spoilers, but I, I haven't really been able to figure that out since I finished watching this movie. Is it tied to the other movies? My feeling is it is, and it's probably more of a reboot slash sequel to summarize it. But um, you really can watch this movie if you're new to the Saw franchise and not really miss too much. I would maybe watch one or two other Saw movies, but you certainly don't need to watch all seven for this one uh, to make sense for you. Um, and then finally, I did like what they did with John Kramer here and just having Tobin Bell back in general in this movie um, after not having a Saw movie for seven years is definitely a huge plus to see him on screen and hear that voice again. It does give the movie a lot more weight and context as a result of having, let's face it, the most iconic character or villain in this entire franchise in Jigsaw slash John Kramer. So I did enjoy that aspect of it. So, yeah, that's it for my pros for this movie. Um, now we got to get into the cons. Um, for a movie that, so the first seven Saw movies all came out year after year from 2004 to 2010. And then we basically went seven years without getting a Saw movie. Um, from 2010 to 2017, there were no, no Saw movies. And having watched this movie and with all the cons I'm going to get into, I can't help but think that they just wanted cash. Um, because this movie really doesn't do anything else besides that being a cash grab. Um, involving Tobin Bell, having some better camera work and cinematography. Those are really the only pros, pros for this movie. And so I think the biggest disappointment is they took seven years to come up with this idea. And at the end of the day, there's nothing new or original here, which I'll get into. So I was really disappointed in the traps and also the lesser slash lack of toned down gore, basically. There is some blood and gore in this movie, but compared to compared to a lot of the Saw movies and the sequels, which by the time you got to Saw 4 was basically what it was all about, let's be honest about it. The stories kind of went out the window at the end of Saw 3, if you're being honest with yourself. And that was disappointing to not have, I mean, if you're going to have a Saw movie, at least have the, the traps that are cool and original, at least have the gore for the gore hounds out there, which I'm kind of one of, but um, I can, you know, I can get down with a good story and, and good psychological horror as well. Unfortunately, this movie has none of those three things. Um, but yeah, I mean, with that, what everybody expects from a Saw movie, this just doesn't have it. It's really lacking in this movie, both the gore and the traps. Um, this movie may be the worst movie in terms of characters in the entire franchise, and that's saying something when you consider some of the fr some of the sequels that this franchise has had before this one. There's absolutely no likable characters anywhere on screen. There's no one to root for, no one that we care about. We're not invested in anybody with any emotional weight other than John Kramer, of course, and that's only because we're familiar with him from before. Um, yeah, the writing and the layers to any of these characters are drek, and that's a nice way of putting it in this movie. I really could not get behind any of these characters at all. There is, There wasn't one. I just didn't care about any of them. The acting is pretty atrocious to piggyback on that point in this movie, especially by the characters that are placed within the game slash traps. Very disappointing, especially when you consider that this movie had one of the higher budgets in the franchise. It's one thing to have bad acting in some of the movies in the middle where they weren't putting a whole lot of budget, a whole lot of money towards these movies. It was just about getting a new one out each year and and being that cash cow for the franchise. But this movie had seven years. You're telling me you couldn't find better acting than what we get in this movie? Terrible. Just terrible, man. Um, let's see. The obvious red herrings that they try to set up are so obvious and predictable, it completely removes any of the mystery or intrigue within this movie. The, the, the writing's just terrible in this movie. I'm sorry to the writers that wrote it, but it really is. They didn't, they try to act like they're all smart, like all these Saw movies do, like they know something we don't. And anybody like, I'm not going to say that I'm the only one. I'm sure a lot of people pegged it. But if you've watched enough Saw movies and enough movies in general that try to have these big twists that you know are coming, this movie's one of the most predictable and obvious ones if you actually watch it. It just, it didn't work at all. They're, um, yeah, no, not not good at all. The writing really really lacks in this movie, and that's also saying something considering this franchise that it, that it lacks more in this one than any of the other ones. But by the way, how many apprentices did John Kramer set up prior to his death? Assuming this is a sequel, 
in the eighth movie in terms of the first seven having resonance in this movie, which I believe it does, because there are some things that are referenced in little Easter eggs and stuff. Um, he's got like four apprentices now. I mean, really? Are we expected? We're expected to believe that? And I mean, it's, oh man, that that is it's become so laughable and completely overused plot point that we've seen three times before with Amanda. No, I got a bird. It's making noise with Amanda, with um, uh, Hoffman, and then of course with Doctor um, Doctor Gordon. And so now we have another one, basically, not to give any spoilers. But I'm not going to tell you who it is or anything like that. It should be obvious if you've watched a movie, even before you get to the ending. But it's like it's, they've they've set this, they've used this trope, this plot point, so many times in this franchise, and I'm actually annoyed by it now. It was it was cool the first time, even the second time to a certain extent, I could get behind. But that's all they do now, and it's like John Kramer must be the great the greatest future teller in the history of mankind. That before he died, well, he had cancer, that he could. He could meet and set up all these other apprentices to carry on his legacy after he did. It's just saying that it's strange credulity is one of the great understatements of all time. The twists and turns in this movie, especially at the end, are old recycled and reused plot points and character tropes and everything else with worse characters and a worse overall story with worse motivations of this entire franchise, Frank. That's why these twists that they try to set up at the end, they didn't work for me at all because we've seen them before. We've seen them in several other movies before from the timeline to the characters, to who the apprentice is, to just out every twist they try to throw at you in this movie we've seen before. And it's been done better in my opinion. Um, the amount of plot holes overall and convoluted storytelling in this movie is off the charts. It actually makes the sequels look competent in that regard. And again, you've heard me say this before in this review, but that's saying something. They try to make you think like they're smart storytellers. Well, in reality, they are lazy and unoriginal. Blah. That was the last word I wrote in my review. Blah. Yeah, no, this is... Um, I didn't, again, I, I can't imagine how disappointed a lot of people would have been if they actually watched these movies the years they came out. I did not, obviously. But waiting seven movies for getting an old, fat, an old rehashed, recycled, unoriginal movie with basically the same, the same plot points, the same tired twists that we've seen before, and basically that just has the only thing this movie has better than the other ones. Like I said in my pros, it looks good. The camera work, I believe, is better, and you don't get all the shaky editing. Other than that, this is. This is a lot of recycled garbage, which doesn't work as well as the other movies do. And in my opinion, from the first eight movies that I've seen, I know I got one more to go and then the new one coming out. This is the worst movie in the franchise so far, the first eight, in my opinion. You can argue with me down below if you want. I know other people, there's a couple other ones that I've already watched. People are going to say, what are, you, what are you talking about? That one's worse. No, not to me. This was worse for me, and it was more annoying because... It had no originality. It didn't even try to do anything new with traps or gore. It's kind of the worst of all worlds, really, other than the cinematography. So five and a half out of ten, and the only reason I'm giving it five and a half out of ten is because Tobit Bell's in the movie, and some of the technical aspects are good. They actually use some of their budget to make the movie look good with all the shaky editing. That, get, that gets them five and a half. But as far as story, characters, kills, traps, all that stuff, worst of the franchise. So that's my review for Jigsaw from 2017, five and a half out of ten. Go ahead and comment down below what you guys think of Jigsaw from 2017. Did you like it a little more than I did? Am I about on par where you're at? Comment down below. Please like this video and hit the little notification bell as well so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews for this series. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel as well so you don't miss any of my great horror content, not just the rest of this series, but what I have coming up the last four months, the rest of 2023 and beyond. So um, even though this wasn't a great review in terms of a high rating, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying this Saw uh, series. It's hard to believe we're getting to the end with only one more review. Well, until the end of September, where I will have a spoiler-free review for Saw X, which I plan on seeing one of the first couple of days. But anyway, hope you're enjoying it. Hope everybody's finishing up their summer well. And, uh, of course, stay scared. Bye.